today. From Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. This is the National Football League. We'll see Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. We are just about four miles off the shore of Lake Erie at Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Minnesota Vikings and the Buffalo Bills. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. And we are underway in Buffalo. Taken in at the three. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So already not the best of kick returns there, but that penalty, that adds insult to injury and backs him up even closer to the goal line. Yeah, not ideal field position to begin a drive, is it? Because the extra pressure now goes on the offense. They've got to get some early yards and get away from the shadow of their own goal post. What every offense wants to do in this situation, get two first downs to help out with field position at the least. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Cousins to throw it. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. Cousins looking middle and it's incomplete. KJ Osborne, the one he was looking for. And it's second down. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. And this will be a Vikings first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front. And the way you press the hole, absolutely perfect. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. To throw is Cousins. And this will be incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing. Cousins. And this one incomplete. 
too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. On third down, Cousins. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 44-yard line. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice, sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 44-yard line. From the gun, here's Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. On second down, Cook. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. So they'll come up first and ten now from the 33. Again, it's Cook. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Throwing on second and three, Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're gonna be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll run with Cook. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. That's good hard running right there on first and goal. That gets him down to the two and puts a lot more pressure on that defense. On second and goal, Cook waiting in the backfield all alone. He's going to get it again. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Cousins now. Yeah, he's got it. A gain of five, but not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. 
We hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good, and the Vikings have a 3 nothing lead. Well, given where they started that opening drive, CD, I think to get three out of it, probably a pretty good start that they'll take. I think you're exactly right about that because they just shook off the effects of the kickoff in field position and took the ball, moved it downfield. Didn't pay off with a touchdown, but that drive, that was really nice for them, and they did come away with three points. Joseph now to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. For the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. I remember when he came out of Wyoming, the big question mark, could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL? I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our plays and put those doubts to rest. He can roll out and run it. He can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. From the 24, Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Allen and Knox teaming up there for Buffalo first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. There's the former Vikings, Stephon Diggs. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Throwing now is Allen. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first down, Allen. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. the 30 on second down. Allen. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. 
Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense, and it's built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Play action. Now it's Allen. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger, bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker. And this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. down and they're going to throw with Allen and he's brought down here just outside of the 20. I'm actually looking at this play with defensive eyes here partner because they were still laser focused on him after his earlier exploits on this drive. I think they went back to the well just a little bit too soon. He got across the line of scrimmage but they certainly weren't giving up much more than that. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. Nifty move. Oh, and fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. Ten yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Now a first and 10 at the 11. To throw, it's Allen. Finding Knox there, complete. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds, right at the three. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll be second in a couple. And coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Give him two yards, that sets him up first and goal. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. A well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Cook will take this over the line. Touchdown, Buffalo. He had the option to hand that football off. I think it's safe to say that he made the right decision. That was a heck of a run. It certainly was, and when you mentioned the option, most people think the quarterback's not gonna keep the ball. You know, in the NFL, that's usually not the recipe for being around too long. So when you do keep it, it often surprises the heck out of a defense. The Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was James Cook capping all of that off with a touchdown run.
after the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. From the 30 on second down, Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Now Cousins here on the bootleg, steps away. That's to Dalvin Cook, his running back. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, Hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 38. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Throwing his cousins. He's got his tight end over the middle. T.J. Hawkinson. And he'll be brought down at the 27. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go-around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Working out of the gun, Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Here's second and five now from the 22. Back to the ground, Cook. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. 
Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point, and they like some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Joseph's got it, and they'll get it back within a point at seven to six. So two first quarter field goal attempts for him, and he's converted on both. I like the positive right there. Two for two, got the points on the board. The negative side is they didn't score touchdowns. And of course, going forward in this game, that's going to be the aim, and hopefully they'll be kicking extra points instead. Joseph now to kick this one away. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And they had the touchdown during the last drive, and I'm guessing that you like the balance they had on that last drive. And I loved it. Forget liking it. Absolutely love what they were doing because to be ahead of a defense that much where every play call you have, run or pass, is working pretty well for you. Makes you look like a genius. It really does. It also lets you know. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They'll take over with great field position here, down a point as they start first and 10. Following the interception, Cousins. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. to throw Cousins toward the end zone but that's going to wind up incomplete on that snap he's a hero of his defense after the play he just made a one possession game and his hit kept it exactly that on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Now Cousins. Touchdown, Vikings! Jalen Naylor from eight yards out, and the Vikings have regained the lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota.
Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Buffalo set to get the football back here. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. It's Cameron Dantzler who got him down. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. To the air, Allen. Over the middle complete, it's Davis. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Allen off the play fake. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time, but nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. territory now they'll come up first and 10 at the 49 yard line now Allen and his throw is going to be incomplete offense was moving it a little bit had them back on their heels but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion that gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further so now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down Here's Allen. Now, quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Allen. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. It's Cameron Dantzler who picks it. So rare to see any quarterback toss back-to-back -to -back interceptions in the NFL, regardless of status or experience. Whether it's him personally or just the offensive game plan, I think this defense is reading something out there, and they're holding the upper hand. And out now come the Vikings. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Thank <laughs> you. 
They go play action. Cousins. He's going to go for a big play downfield. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Vikings. Jalen Naylor. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, only the two catches for him thus far, CD, but both of them have resulted in touchdowns. And I think he's on the bench right now, Brandon, smiling at his position coach and telling him, all those times you talked to us about efficiency, I'm living it right now. Joseph now to have the PAT. And the lead is now 13. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me one, so you know, when we're having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass, and if I we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you've got to do something <laughs> to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Allen going to throw. On the throw, let him too much that time. It's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. To throw on second and 10. Allen, he's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Allen now looks to throw. That's complete to Davis. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 22. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think, mean by that? Program? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. now on first down and he can't find a receiver and he's brought down multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game well that's a big defensive stop there and it takes away a lot of the momentum from the offense coming up that big completion to prior snap give big credit to the defense for bouncing back
second and ten. On play action, Allen. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and just like that, it's third down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It's a big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Singletary is in. Touchdown, Bills. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through. One-on-one -on -one tackle, no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. on for the extra point. And it's good. The deficit six, 20 to 14. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. To the touchdown bass to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Dalvin Cook taking the field for the Vikings next possession. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They run the counter with Cook. And this will be a Vikings first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? 
What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Play fake. Cousins. And he wisely will throw that one away. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. On play action, Cousins. Hawkinson crossing the middle and bringing it in. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 39. It's a pickup of 16 there that will lead to a new set of downs. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 39-yard line. Cook up the gut, and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. From the 35 on second down, Cousins. Open man, he's got Jefferson across the formation. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it's going to yield a new set of downs. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Credit the sack to Von Miller. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Up the middle, it's Cook. And yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. How about that tip ball going their way? They've got to have a lot of confidence because so far, seems like everything is going their way. On the other side, they're just hoping that second half, it's a little bit of flip the script. Yeah, let's see if they can hang in there mentally because sometimes when things go against you so much in the first half, it's hard to bounce back. Yeah. 
Trying the power game with him. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. C.J. Ham punching it in from a yard away. And the Vikings' decision to go for it pays off with six points. And Charles, maybe that's one they had dialed up. Hey, if we're in a fourth and goal situation, we're going to our muscle. And you can feel the boom, boom, boom all the way up here where we sit. The earth was shaking, and he found his way into the end zone. Yeah, but that's such a, a great guy to have around the goal line, isn't it? Indeed it is. It's a great extra dimension to add to your offense. When you can finish things with power, that's hard for a defense to deal with. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead now stands at 13. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. McKenzie now from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Now Allen. He's got the hookup with Diggs. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Allen's throw going to be caught by McKenzie. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Here's Allen to throw it. Dancing to his left. 
And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. Allen going to keep it again. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. Here's Allen on first and ten. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. First and 10 at the 11. Let's go defense. Let's go defense. Right, here we go. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And we've hit the two minute mark in this first half of action. They're going to beef up their secondary here. Six DBs on third. Looking to throw. Allen. Quick hitter here. It's complete. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. a touchdown grab from Josh Allen and the Bills have cut it back within a score these two teams in this first half it's been fun back and forth back and forth well it's not fun for the defensive coordinators <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it yeah they're having streaks here aren't they being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up and we have a tight game here you know we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf Today is track shoes. That's what we've seen with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far and fun to watch. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And the lead will shrink to six. So that drive 12 plays in length, and it culminates in a Bills touchdown. Touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he won't return. 
return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now, but let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They'll break the huddle come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line. Cousins to throw it. And they take him down the Bills get to him. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Third down, here's a run by Cook. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Back deep, Naheem Hines. on the punt, two on the return, and the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. The offense coming back out here, plenty of energy ready to roll, looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 at a first down. Now the Bills will hustle to the line. Throwing on first down is Allen. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they can at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. To back good plays have him on the move on first down back to throw Allen and that going to be incomplete too tough to hold on to that one it's second down normally being a big bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield go up and make the catch take the hit and pick up yardage but in this case the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp second and ten now from the 27 Looking to throw, Allen, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. It's 
so on fourth down, out is Tyler Bass in the Buffalo field goal unit. It's a 39-yard attempt, right hash. The kick by Bass is good, and that will bring the deficit back down to three. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're gonna need a little bit better effort in the second half. After knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. Fields it right around the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Vikings going to take over here one more time before the half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll send you down to Orlando and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. shootout so far we'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half McKenzie will not return this and it'll be brought out to the 25 but the Bills offense set to take over to begin quarter number three but Charles in that first half we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter and we both know this coach pretty darn well don't we because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against a front that's prepared for him to try and take off. Second and six, just inside the 30. So the shotgun snap to Allen toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game, and I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they missed a golden opportunity. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Back to throw. 
Allen. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. First down. It's complete to Diggs. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. A nice gain of 21 yards. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 30-yard line. A give up the middle to Singletary. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe it'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here, second and 11. From the gun, it's Allen. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I think he might have been a little bit too focused on turning up field. He didn't stay in bounds. He caught the ball, but he wanted to catch it and run, get that rack yardage so badly, he forgot to stay in bounds first. Throwing is Allen on third. And that is caught. It's Davis. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 14. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Second and two. Let's see what you got. 58. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Cook. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, after the loss on first down, they're going to walk that line and understand they don't have to rush just yet. But time is still going to be a factor in their decision-making. 
Call your play. Make sure everyone knows what they're doing. You have to score a touchdown here. You've got to find a way to cash in. On second and goal, here's an option play left. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Bills have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Partner, it wasn't that long ago, though, when I talked with these NFL coaches about different innovations in the college game. You can see their eyes roll, and they, they just shut down right away. Don't bring me that Joe College stuff. Well, guess what? The college game has definitely infiltrated its way into the NFL. Yeah, and, so, and these guys, when you're seeing the option defensively, you got to stick to your assignments. I know that's cliche. They didn't do it there. And option football means exactly what you just talked about, assignment football for defenders. And that drives them crazy because you have to think your way through a play as opposed to just reacting and making the play. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was Josh Allen using his legs to polish things off. Touchdown Bass to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. Play action now, Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 43. Throwing Cousins. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Von Miller able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Now Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Oh, nice defensive effort there. Providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver. Separates him from the catch. And normally, he's a sure-handed target.
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Now here's Ryan right now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The football back to the Bills and Stephon Diggs. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people that have big games as well. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside, make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. He's going to air one out. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. Love the idea. Love the concept. But you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. First down, Allen. And Diggs has it. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. territory now they'll come up first and 10 at the 48 yard line to throw it's Allen and they'll get this just to the 47 one yard gain Carter even I can figure out who deserves the lion's share of credit for their lead right now because he's been terrific in a dual threat role really chewing up yardage and getting them points with his legs simply put that defense has had no way of stopping him, and that's why his side is on top. Throwing again on second down. Allen works right side into the hands of the tight end, Knox. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Throwing now is Allen. Going right back to Knox, and again a completion. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. Let's go. 
Singletary. They'll run for it. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. No dice for Sean McDermott in the offense. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you punt the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Off the play fake, Cousins. Open man is Osborne. He's got him. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A gain there of 21 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. First down, here's Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. You're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Again, it's Cousins. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. On second down, Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. 83 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? Lava has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They run it again with Cook. Showed off the juke, but still corralled shy of the five at the six-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. From the six now on second and three. To throw is Cousins. This is caught. Touchdown. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon. And the Vikings have retaken a third quarter lead. 
Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Joseph on for the extra point. And that one gives them a three-point lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. McKenzie will not return this and it'll be brought out to the 25. And now out come the Bills. And a drive that stalled out last time. Went for it on fourth, didn't get it. How does that translate here? I would imagine momentum's with the defense. Definitely with the defense because anytime anyone goes for it on fourth down, that's telling you as a defense that they, you can't stop us. We don't think that you can. And when you actually do, that may put a little dent in the confidence of the offense the next time they hit the field. Yeah, we'll see if they can bring that pride to the offense this go around. All that practice time came to fruition on now play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An outcut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. To throw again on second down. Allen flushed out right. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. The plan was clearly to challenge them by sending a blitz on second down, but even the extra guys couldn't catch him in the backfield, though. He doesn't scramble for a first, but he does get the last laugh by baiting the blitz and getting beyond the line of scrimmage. On third down, they go with Singletary. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. The throw on target to his receiver McKenzie. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Now Allen. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. There's a Darius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Allen. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. 
And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Allen going to throw. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. These are running back numbers that he's accumulated right now. Received double-digit carries and has rewarded them by breaking the century mark in rushing, in addition to what he's done through the air. Definitely MVP caliber football we're witnessing. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Throwing on second down, Allen, and this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open, and when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Allen now looks to throw. There's that man again, Diggs. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. He made his first attempt, this from 45. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills have tied the game here in the fourth. You talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss, and now it's third down. 
I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. The offense on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and 14. Cousins now. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force him fourth down? And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. It will be 37 yards there on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. Play action. Now it's Allen. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To the air, Allen. Over the middle, complete. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they will set up sharp at their own 41-yard line. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Out, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Throw caught there by Osborne. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On play action, Cousins. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 20-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. They run the counter with Cook. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Ezra Cleveland, the guard, called for the penalty there. To throw, Cousins. 
He's got his tight end over the middle. T.J. Hawkinson. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second and eight coming up. Cook up the gut. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Third and short yardage, Cousins, and that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to break our fourth quarter time. The kick by Joseph is good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Joseph now to kick this one away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And here come the Bills. And they really need to forget about their last time out, the turnover that led to a field goal. So now they try to regroup, trailing in the final quarter. Obviously, they'd love a touchdown, but three would suffice. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And that one blown up quickly, as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Credit Zadarius Smith able to get through and make that tackle for a loss. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Here's the option, running right. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. He'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained, and in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Here's Allen. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And this is a rarity in the NFL, a 100-yard game on the ground for a quarterback. Even as those passers get more athletic and mobile, we only see about five of these a season. It takes a special set of circumstances for it to happen, and of course, a special player. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. 
Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 right at the 30. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Again, it's Cook. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. 107 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. The Vikings on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Cousins to throw it. He's got his man, T.J. Hawkinson. And he will have a Vikings first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. the middle it's Cook and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up they suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them and boy were they right that defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down the last run good for two here's second and eight Cousins and his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And it's third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. The Vikings on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and eight from the gun. Here's Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 40. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop him. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory, right at the 40. Now Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Play fake, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And they're gonna get this down inside the 20. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football, so now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. I got you. I got you. 
On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Throwing his cousins. It's caught. Smith. The result only four yards there on the play. And that will bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Nine yard line, second and six. Cousins. And it's caught. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal as they search for what could be a game ceiling touchdown. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll run with Cook, and he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Dalvin Cook taking it in from a yard out, and the Vikings get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Joseph connects on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Josh Allen in the offense now. Down by 10, a minute 54 on the clock. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Allen. And that's complete to Davis. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing his Allen. He finds his man, that's Sweeney. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Now Allen. 
And that is incomplete. That means there's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. One final try here for Allen. He's going to let it fly. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. time to his left and he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew incomplete here and once he got out of the pocket you thought that maybe he'd take off with it especially here in the two minute drill sometimes defenses are focused so much downfield that there's room to run but this time he decided to throw it unsuccessfully a lot of tired bodies on that field but this is a big play third and goal here's Allen to the end zone, but it's incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to get it back to a one-score game. The kick by Bass is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So he remains perfect, three for three, in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. showing 19 seconds to go. And the Vikings hands team able to recover, and that should just about do it. The uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ball game.
Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to a one-possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Buffalo.